The Quantel DPB 7001 is our second generation of paint equipment. When designing this system, we try to think of it from the artist's point of view. He has been trained and is used to using his normal tools, his paintbrushes, crayons, his pencils, whatever it may be. And therefore, we design a system to take advantage of this and allow it to simulate these materials. The mathematical algorithms required to do this turned out to be very complicated indeed. The system computer turned out very large and also was very slow in operation. So we had to design some dedicated hardware to do this job. In fact, this turned out to be a very cost-effective way, and you can see that the system consists of only now a small amount of computing power, as shown on the left-hand side. The bottom unit is the DPB-7001 itself. On the top is now a relatively small LSI-11 computer. In the middle there is the storage unit. Of course, when the artist has drawn his pictures, he wants to store them away, and so we provide him with a Winchester disc. That is contained in the right-hand side of the unit. This stores up to about 20 pictures, and it's the artist's day's work, or perhaps his week's work, depending on the complexity of the work. Obviously, this is a fixed media, he can't take it away, so we've also provided him with a floppy disk, which you can see on the left-hand side. This will store one picture per floppy disk, but then the artist may take it away and write on it, store it, archive it in any way he wishes. The rest of the system consists in the center of an RGB monitor on which the artist draws his pictures. On the right hand side there is a small black and white monitor which is used for the menu operations. And in the center of course is the touch tablet upon which the artist draws. Our system is unique however in that the stylus has a sensor in it which allows the computer to measure the amount of pressure which the artist is applying and in this way give the system much more feel. If he presses very gently, then he applies just a small amount of paint. If he presses very hard, then he applies a lot of paint. In fact, he responds just like a paintbrush. The DPB 7001 has three outputs. The first output is an RGB output, which is the one the artist normally uses to display his paintings. There is also a coded PAL output, which may be used to feed a videotape recorder or any other part of the studio. The third output is a digital output, and this is used to connect to the DLS 6001, so enabling the artist to transfer the pictures he's drawn onto the still store system. In order to demonstrate the system, we have asked Martin Holbrook, who is a professional artist, to show it to you, and I shall ask him to demonstrate how he goes about controlling the system to do his painting. By bringing the stylus into contact with the touch tablet, we illuminate a cursor, which, as you can see on the screen before you, defines where we are in relation to the picture area. By bringing the stylus towards me, I call up a palette or color mixing area, again defined, as you can see there. Over on the left are 20 or so colors which we've selected at random when doing exercises with the DPB 7001 over the last few weeks. The 12 white uh, squares before you here are empty paint pots um, which I can fill up with colors as I go along mixing them so I can store them away and call them back if I want to use them some other time. Over on the right hand side here we have two columns the left hand of which denotes the stylus size or thickness. So by selecting black, the bottom square here denotes the, the very thick paintbrush size. The top one, the very fine, and then we have two intermediate sizes thus. The sensitivity of the stylus means that we can mix colors um, the sensitivity of the stylus means that we can apply color in, in a graduated way. Thus, the harder you push, the more color is deposited. So, by pushing very gently, pressing very gently, very little color, color is deposited. And the thicker it gets, 
the thicker the paint is deposited. You can see this very clearly if we put over the top of that a second color. You can see that the color is absolutely transparent while we're pushing very, or pressing very lightly. And the harder you press, the thicker the paint becomes. This obviously means that where we're overlapping colors like this, uh, by selecting those areas where the colors do overlap, we can pick up any mixture of colors in an infinite variety of combinations. So if we try that, for example, on the palette area, by then selecting a second color and just applying it over the top, in this intermediate area here, by dabbing down there, we can select a mixture. You can see now that we're going to mix colors just exactly as if it were a paint box. An absolutely infinite variety of color is now available to us. This, of course, also applies if one's using all the different pen widths. So we have the equivalent, really, of very fine pencil. All this time I've been working um, in the P for paintbrush mode here. We also have W for watercolor or wash. This enables us to, to dilute or water down a color and lay down transparent washes of color over the picture area. This always remains transparent, unlike the P for paintbrush mode, which is transparent only when you don't press very hard and then becomes completely opaque. T is a recent introduction. This stands for texture. This enables the stylus to be used very much in the same way as, as chalk. See if I can find a color that demonstrates that. Here you can see the very slightly textured effect achieved by that mode. By selecting white canvas on the picture menu monitor, I can clean the picture area. This allows me to demonstrate by signing my name just how quickly the machine can respond to, to my input, actually keeping up with uh, me as I actually sign my name in real time. So if we look at that again, very fine line, helps us to demonstrate how the machine really is operating exactly as you would expect to see a pencil or paintbrush operate. There's no stepping, no feeling at all of this being a computer-generated image. This, this is just writing or exactly as you'd expect to see it on the printed pay on, the, on a sheet of paper. Over the last few weeks, I've been doing a, a series of exercises, just trying out different techniques on the machine, seeing how it'll perform. One of the very earliest things we did was see if it would cope with a fairly textured uh, picture technique, rather like oil painting. And this is one of the very first exercises we did. Again, a very simple exercise, but it does demonstrate, I think, that you can achieve some fairly interesting textured results just by working direct onto the touch tablet. Alternatively, by laying on transparent color washes, as we saw earlier, you can achieve an effect very much like a watercolor. This little picture, again, was done in exactly that way, laying on successive color washes, transparent washes. Well, I think it shows just how sensitive this machine can be. We've also tried different techniques. This is a, a felt tip technique, I suppose, a very immediate um, demonstration of how you can illustrate a news story more or less exactly as it's happening. The other effects open to us are possibly gouache or poster color. This is a little painting illustration we did for a specific video demonstration. And it's a convenient moment, I think, to show that we have a times two enlarged facility. I can enlarge any, any part of this picture area just by dabbing down thus. This enables me to work in the magnified size. So if we wanted to change the color of our eyes, for example, 
we can work with very great accuracy and delicacy in, a, in an enlarged size and then put it down to size again when we require. You'll also notice at this moment that I'm taking color direct off the picture. Uh, when the palette is showing, this enables us to correct any mistakes we may make. So, for example, this, this sort of error can be corrected by selecting an adjacent color and wiping off the mistake we've made. Obviously, this enables one to do some extremely detailed work indeed. Whoops. Of course, what we're doing to this picture isn't actually stored on the disk. So, I mean, if I make the most terrible mistake, uh, the picture can be restored in its original form just by ref referring to the menu. We can wipe away the mistake. I'll then put that down to normal size again, and it's all gone. This picture is an exercise which we did at the Montreux exhibition. Progressively, as the exhibition continued, I executed this little drawing based on a picture postcard which we'd gone out and bought of the local beauty spot. This is really, as I say, just a progressive exercise to show people as they came in how pictures could be built up. I think what's very interesting about this device is how, to the user, it it's behaves in exactly the same way to all the media one's used to. Uh, the actual exercise of painting or drawing is really very unsurprising once you've got over the initial shock of the fact that it is electronic and not wet and sticky. Another little exercise we did very recently, just for a bit of fun, is a series of little pictures using the texture uh, mode, which is a fairly recent addition. I've just done this little little picture, and then we thought we could see if we could change it a bit as the years pass and England's sylvan pastures are improved by successive governments. And this is the sort of thing we can all look forward to, I've no doubt, in the future. People often ask if it's um, difficult to get used to the machine. Well, the answer to that, I think, is no. This is a picture executed by a man who'd actually never seen the machine before in his life, and he came in during one of our exhibitions, um, and within an hour, of, he'd, he'd done this little exercise. And I think what's nice about it is that it does show that the machine doesn't inhibit an artist in any ways, and you can see quite clearly that this is a, an entirely different style. And it's nowhere a picture that could have been done by me. Likewise, um, another man came in who was extremely resistant to the machine when he first saw it. He was a pastel artist, and after spending about 40 minutes getting used to the machine, he did what is quite obviously a, a pastel picture. The 7001 is also capable of um, absorbing a live video input. While we were at Montreux, uh, we captured a picture via the camera which we had pointing out of our demonstration suite across the lake. Because of the ability to pick colors directly off the picture area, this means that this really is the retouch of stream, this machine. What is not immediately apparent is that there is in fact 6,000 feet of mountain immediately opposite here, and I've, by picking up the sky colors and a little bit of work, I've retouched the picture and removed them. Of course, it's just as easy to put them back in by the same token. So if we select the mountain color, I can begin to build up my mountain again as it was before I butchered it. It really is a very speedy and easy method of retouching. It enables one to pick up all the subtle coloring already in the picture area and work directly to build the picture back. A little bit of snow on the peaks. And really, 
already we're beginning to get back to the view much as it was before we started interfering with it. Just quickly replace the branch. And I don't think it would be possible then to realize that I'd monkeyed with the picture. Of course, it's also possible by using the watercolor mode to tint pictures. So we could um, paint this tree pink, for example, by selecting watercolor. And a little bit of tidying up around the edges. Or we can turn the light on. Of course, by the same token, by selecting um, the watercolor mode and a neutral color, we can uh, take the color out of a picture. This enables you, obviously, to leave to find any color area you want. In this case, the tree, which isn't a very strong color, but it reduces the rest of the picture to monochrome. Or we can uh, quite simply just by selecting paintbrush mode again, indicate areas on the picture, really any demonstration technique available. And that really concludes the exhibition.